Hey there! Right now, Rivian is trying hard to tame their AI beast. They're not just writing lines of code anymore to tell it to do or not do something. It's more like trying to tame a wild animal. I've been doing some early testing with Rivian's new universal hands-free system, and they've definitely loosened the reins a little bit on the AI and given it more control, but it's also given us a window into the wild beast that it is. Let's talk about it. Over the past few days, since Rivian dropped their universal hands-free system on the world, I've been doing some testing. And I put in probably about 100 to 150 miles at this point. And for me, that's just getting started. I have a whole lot more testing and a lot more miles to put in with it. So I'll go a lot more in depth. But already up to this point, I can tell it's very interesting. It's essentially the same AI system that we've seen from Rivian over the last few months, but they've loosened the reins on it a little bit, and it's kind of given a window into the wild animal that it really is. By the way, as I go back and do more testing, I'm going to want your input on that as well. I want to know what things you're curious about, but we'll come back to that in just a minute. So going back to the topic of taming the AI, it really is more like a wild animal than it is lines of code. Uh, there is no hard line code that specifically says do this or don't do that. And that's the magic of machine learning, a neural net. You just train it by showing it examples of things. You don't tell it this is what a stop sign looked like. Instead, you give it a whole bunch of examples of what a stop sign looks like. And, you know, same thing for behaviors. This is how you change lanes. This is how you don't change lanes. There's no specific line of code that controls any of it, really. And honestly, that's super cool because that lets the system think for itself and adapt to a world that is just ever changing. Because the reality of it is you can't possibly conceive of every single situation that's ever going to occur in the real world. And so if you're just hard coding rules of how to handle certain situations, you can only handle so many things because you can only code in so many scenarios. But inherently there's a challenge with that. And that's the fact that artificial intelligence is intelligence, so to speak. It thinks and it does things that you don't necessarily anticipate, which is a good thing, but it's also sometimes a bad thing too. Sometimes you want it to specifically follow the rules of the road and just be a very strict rule follower. But other times breaking the rules is actually kind of needed. Uh, but we'll come back to that in a second. Real quick, if you find these videos interesting or entertaining, and you're buying a Rivian, use my referral code down below. You'll get up to 500 points to the Rivian gear shop, plus you get free charging. So <laughs> that's a win. So on the topic of creativity versus rule following, it really is an interesting thing to see in the real world how these systems operate. Because in an ideal world, you want it to never run a red light. You want it to never cross the line into oncoming traffic. You want it to always be perfectly courteous and follow the speed limit and just be a general good rule following citizen. But unfortunately, the real world is kind of messy. You also need the AI to deal with unknown situations. So for example, when there's a delivery van that's pulled over and it's blocking the traffic, you can't just sit there and wait for 20 minutes while the delivery van is parked there. Sometimes you might need to cross the yellow line into the oncoming lane to get around the delivery van. Sometimes you drive on highways with aggressive people where if you aren't assertive inserting yourself on a lane change, you will never get over into the next lane and you will end up 20 miles past the exit that you want to get on. Sometimes things are a little bit messy and the AI has to deal with these situations. It has to have a mind of its own, so to speak. But also, if you loosen the reins too much, then it's going to start doing things that you really don't want it to do. You don't want it just going into oncoming traffic willy nilly when there's no reason for it and or it's not safe to do so. You also don't want it just being unnecessarily aggressive on the roads when it's empty and traffic is flowing nicely. So there's a whole lot of give and take where creativity is needed to drive in the real world, but also you can't just have a wild west of just doing whatever you want. And it's definitely clear that Rivian is fighting this battle right now with universal hands-free. It certainly is very conservative in a lot of areas, 
But it's also clear that Rivian is trying to tune the model so it's aggressive when it needs to be and also, you know, following the rules when it needs to be as well. One great example of this is when you're coming up to a road with no lines on it. Explicitly, Rivian's system only works with roads that have lines on them because that's where they have a high degree of certainty. However, when it comes to the real world, there's no like line of code that Rivian can put into the AI that just says, if lines, then drive. If not lines, then don't drive. Because it's an AI model. And so I've encountered a few scenarios actually where the lines on the roads all but disappear and it keeps going. And it actually does a pretty good job of understanding the geometry of the road and where it should be on the road, even though there's no markings. And this is explicitly something that Rivian says cannot and should not happen because they have a low degree of confidence. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go out and test this because it is indeed still learning and it doesn't understand the geometry of every road. So don't push your luck on this. And honestly, it doesn't even always do it. There are some times when it does follow that directive of if there are no lines on the road, hand control back over to the driver. And more often than not, this is actually what happens. But this is just an example showing that sometimes AI doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. Another example of this was Rivian's point-to-point self-driving system, their version of FSD, the demo that they were giving at their autonomy day. They had the behavior of do not turn right on red that it was a parameter given to the AI. And for the most part, it followed that. It didn't turn right on red, but on some of the demo drives, not in mine, but in some of the other demo drives, it did not follow that parameter and it did turn right on red. And so this definitely shows the struggle that you have with any AI model. Sometimes it has a mind of its own and you can encounter the same situation 15 times and it won't react to the same every single time. You know, 14 of the 15 times it might stop on red, but that one out of 15, it might just take the right on red anyway. So it's clear that Rivian is taking the very conservative approach with this, where until they're very certain that it can follow all of the parameters and rules that has set up, they're taking it very slowly because it literally is like taming a wild beast. And in that process, it's really cool to watch the AI model both get smarter and have a little bit more situational awareness, as well as understanding the rules of the road and seeing the limits put in as parameters on the AI. And there's a whole lot to dig into with this. There's different parameters that you can give the AI just as it's going. This is sort of like when you have a large language model like ChatGPT or Gemini that you're chatting with and you tell it to behave a certain way or act a certain way when you're asking it a question. That would be like a parameter that you put into it. But then there's also controls that you have with how it's trained. For example, with the large driving model that Rivian has in their vehicles, if you want it to be a more passive driver, then you only train it with examples of passive driving. You don't even show it what aggressive driving looks like. Now, I'm not saying that that's something they can or should or even have done, but just an example, because you do need varying degrees of uh, assertiveness when you're, when you're driving on real roads. But... There's a few different ways that you can uh, control what the AI is doing and tame the beast. And I want to find out exactly what behaviors are learned behaviors just from the training data, what behaviors are parameters that they're putting in, and what behaviors are based on mapping rules. Uh, for example, right now we're seeing that lane changes are specifically locked to the highway assist highways that we had before. So we still haven't reached full feature parity, so to speak, with highway assist. Lane, automatic lane changes just aren't a thing on surface streets. And I want to get a better idea for how all of these systems are in place and watching it grow. Because it's really cool to watch Rivian advance this and it's just interesting to see. So this is where your input comes in. I have some tests that I want to do. Like I said, I want to see exactly how the mapping is and is not being used for lane changes. I want to see uh, stoplights, for example. There's a little warning that pops up when a stoplight is approaching. So is that something that's based on like Google Maps telling it that there's a stoplight soon? Or does it see the stoplight and recognize it and pop up that warning itself? I want to see if I can figure out all of this stuff. And I'm curious what things you want to know as well. So drop a comment. Let me know what things about the system you're curious about. 
I may not be able to answer all of the questions. Some things you can figure out with testing, some things you can't, but let me know what you're curious about and I'll do my best to try and find some answers. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be spending a lot more time testing and diving in with Universal Hands Free, and we're going to pick apart exactly what this AI beast is doing and how Rivian's taming measures are working. And spoiler alert, I can already tell you, some of their uh, measures to tame the beast are working extremely well, and some need to be honed in a little bit more, which is why up to this point, it's very conservatively behaved. Uh, but yeah, let me know. In the meantime, happy holidays. <laughs> That's just too many mistakes. Testing with the podcast mic, I think I need a little bit more gain. Universal hands free, and they've been loosening the reins. Loosening the reins, you say? <laughs> <laughs>